Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Takata from uh, <coughs> Samuel Science and Engineering Division. So today we have uh, the uh, guest speaker from uh, China. So Professor Ben Zhang from uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Uh, I'd like to briefly introduce his uh, career and background. So, Professor Ben Zhang <coughs> graduated from uh, Shanghai Jiao Tong University in 1995. Then he uh, <coughs> entered the uh, graduate school and uh, he finished uh, PhD in 1999. So, uh, then he was appointed the uh, <coughs> lecturer at the Shanghai Jiao Tong University in 1999. Uh, then uh, he was uh, promoted to uh, during uh, <coughs> uh, so he <coughs> uh, joined uh, the, the California University of California at Santa Barbara from uh, 2000 to 2001 as a uh, postgraduate researcher. And then he was promoted to associate professor. And in 2002, he <coughs> was awarded the JSPS uh, postdoctoral uh, research fellow. And he stayed with the uh, University of Tsukuba until uh, 2004. And uh, he was promoted to a uh, group professor at Shanghai Jiao Tong University in 2004. So his uh, research area is the <coughs> uh, thermal energy storage by uh, phase change materials and the uh, solaris. And also he is doing the research on the heat and fluid flow in cryogenic field. He has published uh, more than 100 uh, journal papers and he receives a number of awards. So in this list, he received 80 awards. So I will I <coughs> not introduce each. <laughs> okay. So today his talk is uh, the some fluidic characteristics of phase change materials study and application to some energy storage. Okay, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your introduction, Professor Tagada. And first of all, uh, thank you for coming. So my, my name is Pen Zhang uh, from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. So I'm going to uh, uh, talk about thermal fluidic characteristics of phase change materials scenario and uh, application to thermal energy storage. So uh, before that, I just uh, shortly uh, introduce what I'm doing now. So my research is focused on fluid flow and heat transfer. So mostly, uh, specifically, uh, some energy storage. And recently, I'm doing something about uh, carbon dioxide dissolution to, for example, sea water and also uh, carbon, dioxide, carbon dioxide hydrate, as well as uh, cryogenic technology. So this is the uh, main field. Uh, my research field. And this is the outline of my talk today. I will uh, first introduce background and then introduce something about the phase change materials larvae. And then goes to some more fluidic characteristics uh, and then application to some energy storage. Finally, I just summarize my talk. Uh, for the background, as you know, probably everybody knows, uh, we, we are facing two big problems. One is the environment issue, and another is the energy issue. Uh, if you just simply look at the change of the Arctic Ocean, just over 30 years, uh, this is the data in the year of 2007. You can say a lot of ice has been melted, uh, indicating the temperature of uh, atmosphere is increasing. On the right side, I just show a drastic increase of the energy consumption. Over uh, 100 years, you can say, a lot of the fossil energy has been uh, consumed. So we have emitted a lot of, uh, uh, for example, carbon dioxide and so on. Uh, here, uh, I just show some data. This is data is released by US government. 
this data is taken in Hawaii. As you can see, this uh, carbon dioxide concentration steadily increase up to uh, close to 400 ppm. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know that the safety uh, level is 350 ppm. So right side, just the recent uh, uh, research results published in IEEE Spectrum. Uh, there are three uh, uh, curves. One is uh, if we just keep the current uh, uh, increase of the economy, so probably we will have uh, this uh, increase of carbon dioxide up to very high level. But if you just decrease uh, the economy increase, of course you, you take some action, and then carbon dioxide uh, decreases. But the penalty is that the economy decreases uh, uh, a lot. Uh, if we take some action uh, simultaneously and uh, keep the uh, reasonable pace of the increase of the economy, so we probably have this results. But uh, anyway, the, the safety is only uh, 350, so larger than this uh, number. So we need to take some action. Otherwise, this probably, some might say, this may happen. So you, you have to learn how to swim now. Uh, another point is that uh, uh, refrigeration system and air conditioning system. So everybody knows that uh, refrigeration system and air conditioning system consume a lot of energy. Uh, this is uh, one aspect. Another aspect is that uh, uh, such system uh, release uh, a lot of uh, uh, environment negative impact gases, for example, CFCs and HCFCs. So we have a phase out of conventional refrigerants. And then uh, you have to think about how to increase uh, the energy efficiency, uh, which has been uh, used for uh, running refrigeration system. And uh, such a system causes a, a big difference between peak load and off peak load, uh, especially during summertime. Of course, you want to uh, reduce the running cost of such system. Uh, if you just uh, have a look at the data in Shanghai, uh, this is uh, uh, electricity load in Shanghai. For example, two years ago in, in 2013, uh, that was very hot in summertime. So you have this large number of the peak load. And the difference between peak load and off peak load is more than 40% of that. So this is quite large. Last year, in summer in Shanghai, it was cool. But still, we have a quite a big number of the peak load. The reason is that uh, uh, sometimes uh, you, you, you are not only running a uh, refrigerator for cooling, uh, but sometimes you want to reduce the humidity. In Shanghai, the humidity is high. So still, we have a very large uh, difference between peak load and off peak load. So we are expecting such data, maybe steady increase. So you have to take some actions to uh, reduce this difference because uh, uh, such drastic increase of the peak load within very short time uh, have uh, some damage, probably uh, potential damage to safety of the grid. So uh, secondary loop refrigeration probably is one of the good choices because in such system, you have nurse conventional refrigeration uh, refrigerants is charged. And then uh, such a cold storage system could be easily uh, implemented in, in, in a conventional uh, system. For example, uh, this is a working principle of secondary loop refrigeration. Uh, it's just during off-peak time, we have the cold storage of the uh, in this tank, and during the peak time, you don't have to run additional refrigerator. So you just uh, distribute the code to the terminal user so that you can uh, reduce the peak load as well as to uh, shift the peak load to up peak time. Uh, of course, in such system, the secondary uh, refrigerator is very important. Conventional one is just uh, water or ice larvae. For ice slurry, it, it's a kind of uh, phase change material. Uh, because uh, for water, it is just single phase. Uh, the single phase, uh, so this uh, heat capacity of this water is much less than uh, ice slurry. So if you can run the ice slurry in the system, 
So the pumping power could be reduced a lot so that you can save energy. So here is uh, just uh, the energy transport by phase change materials theory. This is a dream of uh, probably Professor Suzuki Hiroshi in, in Kobe University. So he indicated that uh, not only uh, energy could be transported by phase change material. For example, sometimes fuel as could also could be transported by uh, phase change material uh, over quite long distance. So then I just introduce a little bit about phase change material. So we have uh, three kinds of phase change in general. Uh, so I just focus on solid liquid phase change because in this phase change, we don't have much uh, la uh, large volume uh, exchange. So it's better <laughs> to use uh, solid liquid phase change. So there is a uh, uh, latent heat associated with uh, such phase change. Then we can have energy storage by using solid liquid phase change. Uh, of course, we have many, many kinds of uh, solid liquid phase change materials. For example, at this uh, lower temperature range, we have uh, salt hydrate, and the middle temperature range, may, we may have nitrates. Higher temperature rates, may, we may have chloride, and so on. If we uh, put phase change material into uh, a small bore, this uh, uh, it's a micro-encapsulated phase change material. In, in such uh, material, so phase change material is encapsulated in a, a thin layer, uh, thin layer of shell. So the merits is that, uh, uh, as you know, the thermal conductivity of phase change material in general is very small. For example, for paraffin, it is just uh, 0.3 watt per meter, uh, meter, meter K. Uh, if you uh, put uh, you you make the micro encapsulated phase change material, so possibly we can increase the thermal conductivity and also reduce the volume change because the uh, uh, size is smaller, and also you have good uh, thermal stability because you have separate uh, phase change material uh, from the environment. If you uh, uh, dissipate uh, th this material, micro-encapsulated uh, phase change material into the carry fluid, for example, into the water, a kind of slurry, phase change material slurry is formed. So this slurry could be used for heat transfer fluid as well as for some energy storage media. Uh, the point is that it can also reduce the uh, agglomeration so that uh, the blocking of the pipe could be avoided. And uh, in, in general, there are four kinds of uh, uh, phase change material slurries. So if there is a shear, it's a micro-encapsulated phase change material slurry. Uh, without shear, there are in general three kinds of them. So one is micro-PCM uh, emulsion, uh, ice slurry, as well as for clustered hydrate slurry. So in short, uh, clustered hydrate is just the CHS. Please remember this. So you may ask question, why you use phase change material slurry for energy storage? So the point is that if we use uh, phase change material for energy storage, so the thermal energy carrying capacity uh, versus pumping power, this could be largely enhanced. Uh, you, you just uh, uh, take it, for example, as a water system. It is a conventional system. So in such system, 20% uh, to 30% of the electricity is just used for pumping. So you can imagine that, how big the energy has been consumed for pumping. So if we can uh, use uh, a phase change material uh, instead of water, you can save a lot of uh, energy. Uh, if you want to use phase change material uh, for application, you have to think about uh, uh, several properties as well as for reliability, durability, and so on. Of course, temperature range is also important. Uh, the current status, uh, status for uh, application of uh, phase change material might be uh, for micro-encapsulated phase change material slurry. So in application, it is still uh, occasionally used. 
For micro PCM emulsion, it is seldom used. Uh, for ice slurry, right now we frequently use. Uh, for this uh, newly uh, class 3 hydrate slurry, it is very permissive, but still not uh, widely applied. Uh, if we compare the, those two one, class 3 hydrate slurry and versus ice slurry, you may find some good point. Uh, for example, for temperature range, for ice slurry, its uh, temperature must be less than zero degree because there is uh, a subcooling. You, you need subcooling to uh, generate ice. Uh, for class 3 hydrate, uh, we just, uh, for example, we just take the tetrabeto ammonia uh, bromide, it's non lame. Uh, in short, it's TBAB. Uh, we, we just take the TBAB as an example. So this phase change temperature might be seven degree. So this temperature is very good for air conditioning system because in general, we, we just have uh, uh, cooling water like five degree to 12 degree uh, like that. Uh, because this phase change temperature is higher, so you, you can run in the refrigeration system at very high efficiency. Uh, here, I just show the molecular structure of the TBAB class three hydrate. So water, uh, by hydrogen bound to form a kind of cage. So uh, salt is encaged in this uh, cage. And the right side is what we have in the library. You can say the color is milk color, and the fluid is quite good, so that we can use it for pumping. And if we compare the cold storage capacity, the red line is just for water uh, over the temperature range from 5 degree to 12 degree. Uh, you can say this is just the entropy change. And if you compare to TBAB SHS, so obviously uh, they have quite big difference. So for TBAB SHS, so it, it has a much, much larger entropy change so that you can reduce the size of the storage tank as well as to reduce the pumping power. So, uh, of course, thermal properties are very important. So we, we, we just uh, did a lot of experiment to decide fundamental thermal properties. Uh, for example, for phase diagram, we, we just use differential, uh, differential scanning calorimeter to have measurement of the phase change temperature as well as for latent heat. Here are just some uh, example of the raw data. Uh, after a lot of experiment, we just constructed such phase diagram. So we, we find that there are in general, in this icros concent concentration range, uh, there are two kinds of hydrate. One is type A, we call it type A. Another is type B. So there are uh, some difference between type A and type B. Uh, I will mention it in detail later. So for the latent heat uh, of class 3 hydrate, typically for type B, we have this latent heat of the hydrate crystal, like uh, 200, about 200 kilojoule per kilogram. So this data is, uh, number is about two thirds of the light of the ice, indicate that uh, uh, heat, uh, latent heat is quite high. So this is a detailed uh, phase diagram. So in this phase diagram, so one of the uh, parameter is very important. It is a solid fraction. So if you uh, know the solid fraction of uh, this slurry, so you can estimate the uh, cold carry capacity. So this shows the way how you estimate the solid fraction. So the difference between type A and type B from the structural aspect, it is just uh, 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 hydration number of the water is different. In the case of type A, this hydration number is 26. In the case of uh, type B, hydration number is larger, 38. But if you look at the appearance, so they, they have quite big difference. So the type A is a kind of uh, cardamom type, it's, it's longer. For type B, it is quite irregular, but uh, the, the size for type B is smaller. So this is a uh, way, uh, this is the data about uh, specific heat capacity. So we just use the heat balance to measure the heat capacity of the 
uh, across, uh, across solution. So this is uh, head balance and uh, this is some data. Uh, if you increase the uh, solution concentration, you can see the decrease of the across, uh, head capacity. So with the head capacity of the hydrate crystal, we can calculate the head capacity of the slurry. Slurry is the uh, two-phase flow, solid liquid two-phase flow. So you need the uh, uh, head capacity of the aqueous solution as well as the head capacity of the uh, hydrate crystal. Uh, thermal property, uh, thermal conductivity is one of the most important uh, uh, parameter to estimate the heat transfer uh, characteristics. So in, in general, we just use this transient hard wire to have the measurement of the uh, thermal, thermal conductivity of the single phase flow, for example, uh, liquid or gas phase. You can simply use this equation. But in the case of two phase flow, uh, for example, in this case, TBABCHS, it is a two phase flow. So if you apply heating to hard wire, so sometimes the temperature increases, uh, temperature of the hard wire increases, it will cause the melting of the slurry. So you have to take the uh, effect of phase change into consideration. Uh, otherwise, so thermal conductivity is superficially uh, enlarged. So uh, due to the reason that uh, the TBAB uh, solution is uh, electricity conductive, so we have a thin layer of uh, electric insulation. So we built such a theoretical model to consider the hard wire itself, uh, insulation layer, and this uh, CHS, and also this term, uh, this uh, source term indicating the uh, phase change. So we take those uh, equations into consideration, and with the experiment data, we uh, have the theoretical analysis of the uh, phase change effect. We, we find that uh, with increase of the time, so uh, just uh, close to hard wire, so this uh, solid fraction decreases very quickly. So in, in the uh, direction of the radio di direction, along the radio direction, so uh, with the elapse of the time, so this uh, uh, solid fraction, sometimes almost turn into zero, indicating that a lot of uh, uh, slurry has been built so that uh, the thermal conductivity is superficially enlarged. So after the uh, correction, we have the accurate data for uh, class three dehydrate. You can say that if we do not take this phase change effect into consideration, the thermal conductivity is about 20% uh, enlarged. So this is very important to take this into consideration. And uh, of course, pressure drop is another uh, important issue. Uh, we, for the first step, we just use a real meter to measure the rheological feature. Uh, for the aqueous solution, no problem. It is uh, Newtonian fluid. But in the case of cross-rate hydrate slurry, it is two-phase flow. If you just simply use this uh, real meter, uh, we find that uh, <coughs> sometimes it's, uh, there is a sedimentation of uh, solid phase so that it is not homogeneous anymore. Uh, but anyway, uh, such two-phase flow shows the non-Newtonian uh, fluid feature. So we have to build another system to measure the pressure drop so that we can understand the non-Newtonian fluid feature. So I'm going to talk about uh, some more fluidic characteristics. So we built such system to measure the pressure drop uh, in order to understand the uh, long newtonian fluid feature as well as the heat transfer of uh, uh, TBAB sages. So this system, uh, uh, we have a refrigeration system to generate uh, TBAB sages and have a storage here, and then we home gen homogenize the, the, the uh, slurry and pump out through the, the tube. And uh, we measure the pressure drop as well as the temperature along the flow direction. 
uh, in this case, we just use the reverse more tube, mini tube. The, the diameter is about uh, uh, two millimeter and five millimeter. Uh, because uh, uh, the reason why we use millimeter uh, mini tubes is that uh, uh, in current uh, refrigeration and air conditioning system, in order to reduce the charge volume of the uh, conventional refrigerants, we uh, use the mini tube. Just for similar reason, we, we just use the mini tube here. Yeah, we have some detailed information in this paper. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, morphology of uh, different uh, hydrogen crystal. So before going to uh, measuring the, the uh, data for TBABCHS, uh, we just validate our experiment setup, use uh, water as a fluid. So you can see this pressure drop data as well as the heat transfer data agrees quite well with some conventional uh, equation for pressure drop for heat transfer. So we can say that our system is quite reliable. So then we go to the uh, experiment for TBABCHS. And here is the results for pressure drop uh, for different tube and for different type A and type B. As you can see, uh, obviously there are two branches, one for laminar flow and one for turbulent flow. Uh, because we have found that uh, this TBABCHS is a uh, non fluid, so we just apply power law fluid to get two important parameter. One is uh, uh, a flow index, another is uh, uh, K apostrophe. It, it's uh, say uh, uh, flow consistence parameter. So with two parameters, uh, uh, we can have the modified Lillo's number. Which, be, which could be used for estimate the uh, friction factors. So obviously, uh, with the increase of uh, uh, concentration, so you have a decrease of the index N and the increase of the K apostrophe. So here, uh, I just show you the uh, friction factor uh, with the modified Lillo's number. For uh, laminar flow, the conventional equation could be used. You just simply uh, change the, the Lillo's number into modified Lillo's number. But for turbulent flow, you must be careful because uh, uh, this equation indicates that uh, uh, not only uh, Lillo's number is changed for modified Lillo's number, but also there is an index, uh, flow index parameter n. So this is a pressure drop. Uh, the most important thing is that if you compare the pressure drops for both type A and type B, you can uh, simply find that uh, the pressure drop for type B is smaller than that of the type A. So this means uh, uh, if we, you use type B, so you can have smaller pressure drop and smaller pumping power. Uh, because uh, the pumping power in general is the cubic of uh, flow rate, so if you have uh, if you use the clustered hydrate as a carrying fluid, uh, because there is a latent heat, uh, solid phase, uh, solid liquid phase change, so you can reduce the flow rate, and then pumping power could be largely reduced. I will show you the experiment data later. And if you, you are looking at the heat transfer uh, of TBABCHS at the same Lillo's number, obviously this uh, heat transfer performance for TBABCHS is much, much better than that of uh, water. Uh, this reason is that there is uh, uh, the phase change of uh, uh, TBABCHS so that uh, heat transfer could be enhanced. Uh, this shows some info detailed information about heat transfer. So uh, along the flow direction from uh, this direction, from the inlet to outlet, we just use the homogeneous uh, model, uh, which is depict, uh, described in detail in this paper, uh, to estimate the change of the solid fraction. Uh, from the inlet to outlet, as you can see, at somewhere, so the solid fraction uh, changes to zero, and also the heat transfer coefficient uh, gradually decreases, and around this point of the 
uh, which uh, uh, solid fraction changes to zero. So this uh, uh, H, H transfer coefficient it decreases to minimal. And then after it is uh, uh, fully turning into aqueous solution, and then H transfer coefficient increases. And if you look at the heat transfer of type A and type B, again, you understand that the heat transfer, transfer performance of type B is better than that of type A. So uh, we can conclude that type B, TBAB, CHS, uh, is better to be used as a heat transfer fluid as well as for uh, cold storage medium. So not only for the experiment, we also uh, have some modeling of the heat transfer. Uh, first, we just use the uh, homogeneous approach because although you have uh, uh, two kinds of uh, uh, fluid, one is uh, the uh, liquid, another is solid, uh, you, you mix, uh, mix together. So in the case of a lot of very high uh, solid fraction, so you can still have a homogeneous uh, fluid. So we just use the uh, river sample homogeneous approach to describe the uh, flow and heat transfer characteristics. Uh, downside, we not only applied this model to uh, TBABCHS, but also we applied this model to some other uh, phase change material slurry. This model is called apigutus. And uh, we compared our numerical results to uh, experiment results, indicating quite good agreement. Uh, this is for TBAB CHS and for microencapsulated phase change material slurry. So we got some data from a reference. Again, we have quite good agreement. Uh, but this is, uh, we think the homogeneous approach is only uh, effective for the case of uh, lot with a high uh, solid fraction. In the case of quite high solid fraction, uh, you have to think, of, think about uh, dispersed uh, approach. In such approach, so solid phase and uh, liquid phase is treated separately. So we just use uh, Euler or Larvae multi phase flow approach, and uh, we consider energy balance uh, between solid phase and liquid phase. Uh, we use the kinetic theory of the granular fluid to describe the motion of the solid phase, as well as uh, we considering some interfacial force. And uh, uh, with some boundary condition, uh, we can have the mirror calculation. So I'm not going to uh, talk very much detail about this approach. If you are interested, we, uh, we have some papers uh, put here. You can refer detail papers. And uh, what I have to say is that uh, for the energy equation, it is quite important to consider the uh, energy balance between liquid and solid. So there is uh, uh, a heat transfer as well as for mass transfer between uh, two phases because there is a uh, phase change. And uh, another point I have to mention is uh, because uh, uh, sometimes we apply heating to the wall, so then you have melting very close to the wall. So you have to think about the difference between main flow and uh, uh, layer wall flow because the solid phase uh, close to the wall range, it is uh, becoming dilute comparing uh, to the inlet at the outlet. So you have to take the effective thermal conductivity into consideration. So with such uh, modeling, uh, this is a mesh. Uh, we, I just mentioned that uh, close to the boundary, we, we, we densified uh, the mesh. So we uh, first step, we just uh, validate our modeling uh, by using some data from a reference. Uh, for example, we uh, just, just use ice slurry for uh, validate our modeling. Uh, first of all, we considering the pressure drop. In this case, there is no phase change. And we compare a velocity distribution with some data from a reference. You can say its agreement is uh, uh, quite good, not very bad. And also for the pressure drop data, 
and also we have quite good uh, comparison to the uh, experiment uh, data. And uh, some feature about the ice larvae. This is uh, a cross section uh, uh, at uh, uh, different cases. Uh, the point is that for ice larvae, so the density of the ice is smaller than that of the water. So uh, around the top boundary, you have more dense, uh, denser uh, ice larvae. At the bottom, you have a smaller uh, solid fraction. So this is a distribution of the uh, solid fraction. And for the heat transfer, if we consider the heat transfer of ice larvae, so again, we compared our numerical results uh, indicated by the solid line to the uh, points, uh, experiment results from those papers. Uh, we have quite good agreement as well as for heat transfer, uh, red line, for pressure drop, blue line. And some detailed feature of the uh, change of the uh, ice larvae. Uh, because uh, in this approach, it's a dispersed approach, we treated it as a uh, solid phase and the liquid phase. So uh, if you look at the temperature of the solid phase, uh, for ice larvae, uh, uh, we here we use glyco water mixture. So the phase change temperature is minus 4.5 degree. So you can say uh, from the inlet to outlet, inlet to outlet, so the, this solid uh, temperature gradually uh, change. Uh, in the most case, it's, it, it keeps at around minus 4.5 degree. After it is uh, fully melted, and the solid temperature change increases. But for liquid phase, from the inlet to outlet, uh, this temperature uh, gradually uh, increases. Uh, we have some uh, detailed information here uh, for uh, liquid temperature. So this is a cross section along the tube. You can say temperature gradually increase from the inlet to outlet and also for solid temperature, uh, although almost kept uh, stable, but uh, around here, uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, quite small here. You can say close to the uh, boundary, the temperature increases. And also this uh, change of the solid fraction from the inlet to outlet, because we have uh, heating as a wall, so this solid phase gradually uh, melted from the inlet to outlet. And here, uh, the change of the solid fraction from the inlet to outlet, and then a transfer coefficient uh, first uh, decreased quickly, because this, this is just the uh, inlet effect, and then the heat transfer coefficient gradually increases due to the melting of the uh, solid phase. And after we validated our modeling, uh, we just uh, applied this uh, approach to study the uh, heat transfer characteristics of TBAB such as, uh, in the case of uh, uh, TBAB such as, things get uh, more complicated because uh, uh, you know for us, it, it is just a single component. It's just water. Uh, but for, for the case of TBAB CHS, we have salt phase. So there are two components. So things get very complicated. And uh, in, in addition to the dispersed modeling, so we have to include this equation into calculation. This equation describes uh, uh, the concentration of the uh, aqua solution uh, because the phase change temperature changes with the uh, uh, aqueous solution concentration. Uh, you can imagine that uh, uh, the flow inside the tube, so just around the tube, the, there is a melting of the solid phase, and then this uh, concentration gradually change, and then makes this uh, phase change uh, temperature, uh, it's gradually change. So the thing is getting very, very complicated. And uh, uh, we compare the safety results showing by open symbols here, and we compare to some uh, experiment results showing those papers. And you can say it's a reasonable agreement uh, for both uh, uh, variation with velocity and also variation with uh, solid fraction. 
And for the heat transfer, again, we have quite good agreement uh, with, uh, from the uh, inlet to outlet. This is a temperature change. Uh, temperature change uh, from inlet to outlet. And also uh, a change of the uh, liquid temperature that's uh, gradually increase from inlet to outlet. And also for the solid temperature, as you know, because I have shown that uh, uh, from the phase diagram, you can find that the solid uh, phase, phase change temperature uh, increases with the increase uh, uh, across solution concentration. So this is uh, uh, different from the ice slurry. So this solid temperature gradually uh, increase uh, from the inlet to outlet. And also there is a, a change of the solid fraction from the inlet to, to outlet. Uh, here is the information about the change of the concentration, across solution concentration. So there is a quite a large change from the inlet to outlet. Uh, just at the inlet, uh, its uh, concentration is about 5%. As you can see, uh, just after melting, for example, uh, close to the boundary, uh, close to the wall, so this concentration is very high. It's, it's up to 30%. And uh, the main flow, this concentration is about uh, uh, 30, uh, 13 percent. Yeah. So you have to take this uh, change of the uh, acro solution concentration into consideration uh, uh, when modeling the heat transfer. Again, here is the heat transfer uh, coefficient change. It's the change of the solid concentration, uh, solid fraction from the inlet to outlet. And uh, this is a heat transfer coefficient decrease first, and then uh, increase again. So it shows quite uh, a similar trend to the experiment data here. And then I just uh, show you some results about the application of the TBA-BCHS to energy storage. And uh, if you wanted to uh, use uh, this uh, uh, CHS for energy storage, so first you have to uh, clean down the solution to make it uh, uh, phase change. So we, we just uh, first do some uh, comparison with the experiment results. So this is uh, just a cool down uh, of the uh, solution. So you can say uh, in this tank, this is the tank, we have inlet here, outlet here. Uh, you can see quite good agreement with the uh, temperature decrease of the solution at different cases. This is just uh, animation to give you general idea the inlet of the lower temperature uh, across solution and the outlet of the uh, out outlet of the solution here. And then in the case of two-phase flow. Uh, solid liquid two-phase flow, it's because there is a slurry. So uh, in the case of uh, uh, smaller uh, velocity, you have some sediment sedimentation of this uh, solid phase because uh, uh, the, the density of the solid phase is in general is larger than that of the uh, liquid phase uh, due to the gravity force. And in the case of uh, larger velocity, so this uh, sedimentation is uh, uh, smaller because of the uh, drag force of the flow, liquid flow. So again, we have some animation. You can say the distribution of the solid phase, and there is some sedimentation. Then uh, I just show you some experiment results about the uh, uh, application of the slurry for energy storage uh, air conditioning system. So this is a system in my library. Uh, we have two storage tank. Uh, one is for uh, TBABSH uh, slurry, and the other is for uh, solution. Uh, during the generation, the cold storage phase, we just cool down the actual solution by using refrigerator. For example, it goes this way to generate uh, uh, slurry, and after that, after we have finished the uh, generation of the Class with hydrate, we just flow out uh, class with hydrate slurry to the terminal user. In our library, we, we just use hot water to simulate uh, cold load. 
and then the slurry passing through this uh, heat exchanger turning into aqueous solution and going back to another tank uh, to have the storage here and then repeat the experiment. Here is a, a view in my library. This is a view from one direction. This is a view from another direction. It's a, a two big tank for, for storage of the uh, solution and the slurry. So, some experiment results. Typical one. Uh, this phase is just cooling down of the aqueous solution. Just around here, we have the generation of the, we have phase change. We have the generation of the uh, slurry. And then due to the release, release of the latent heat, the temperature increases a little bit. We just uh, kept cooling and makes the temperature gradually decrease uh, to increase the thirty fraction. Uh, during experiment, because uh, uh, occasionally we have the uh, solid layer, hydrated layer, uh, appear on the heat transfer wall. So we have to uh, turn in uh, uh, the refrigeration from the cooling model to heating model to melt the, the uh, hydrated layer so that uh, to increase the heat transfer performance of the heat exchanger. So just uh, at the end of the experiment, we can have quite high uh, solid fraction up to uh, thirty percent mass per uh, mass fraction, and then here are some uh, data for uh, COP during the experiment. And not bad; it's uh, uh, sometimes uh, over two point zero. And uh, the important thing is that if uh, uh, this data, uh, because we compared the uh, pressure pumping power pressure drop pumping power uh, for water and for TBAB such as uh, this is a cooling capacity. So you can find that at the specified cooling capacity, the pumping power of water is much, much larger than that of the TBAB such as, which indicates that if you use TBAB uh, such as for cooling calorie, so the pumping power could be largely reduced so that you can uh, save a lot of energy. Then with such experiment data, we have some cases study, uh, just a simple calculation, uh, considering different strategies. For example, for refrigerator primary and the TBAB CHS primary, and also have different uh, uh, a storage ratio of the cold storage, 40% and 60%. Uh, uh, in this case, I, I, I have to mention, uh, we just use the pumping distance uh, in my library. You know, in the library, it is very short pumping distance. So uh, we compare the data to conventional case. For conventional case, it's just uh, use uh, water as a uh, uh, cold storage media. So we find that uh, there is almost low energy saving for uh, compared to the water. Just use the pumping distance uh, in the library. It's quite short pumping distance. So the reason may be that uh, the COP is not very high during generation. Another important thing is that uh, the pumping distance is uh, very much short. But we have quite large the cost uh, reducing uh, because uh, uh, we, we just take this case in Shanghai. For example, in Shanghai, we have a half price of the electricity uh, during midnight. So we have uh, this number of cost re reduction. If we just uh, simply increase the pumping distance, uh, you can imagine that uh, for a uh, building, a large building, the pumping distance is very much large. large. So we just uh, simply increase the pumping distance uh, uh, three times larger, uh, as, as large as the, in my library. So we calculate uh, the energy saving again. We find that comparing to conventional system, we have uh, this number of energy saving. Uh, this number, we think it, it is very conservative. Uh, practically, this number should be much, much larger. 
But uh, again, we have a lot of uh, uh, cost saving uh, for such a system. This is just a simple calculation. So it goes to uh, summary. Uh, there are several kinds of uh, phase change materials larvae which could be used for inert transport and uh, potentially to be used for secondary uh, loop refrigeration system. And uh, such uh, phase changes larvae, uh, I think, share the similar flow and heat transfer characteristics, which could be uh, uh, described by a uh, dispersed uh, approach. And the energy storage test uh, shows that uh, uh, phase change material slurry could be energy and cost uh, efficient. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ben, for your interesting talk. From yeah. uh, the fundamental uh, heat, of heat transfer to the application side. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now, so we take some questions. Maybe you have. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Um, I have a question for the what kind of the uh, distribution of the solid phase and the uh, liquid phase inside of the pipe when thinking about the heat transfer when uh, considering about the radiator origin distribution? You mean distribution of, of the solid phase inside of the pipe okay. when heat transfer is occurring? Uh, uh, actually, we at this stage we just uh, do uh, the uh, horizontal pipe. Yeah, horizontal pipe. Uh, uh, for the first uh, work, we use a homogeneous model to describe uh, so the flow and heat transfer. So in the case of homogeneous model, you, there, it, there is just uh, one phase, but it is not uh, very accurate for uh, very high uh, solid phase, uh, solid fraction. So in the high solid fraction, you have to think about uh, uh, dispersed uh, approach. In most cases, uh, I think, uh, due to the influence of the uh, gravity, so the solid fraction uh, will be a little bit larger uh, so, uh, at the bottom line on the uh, top. But uh, I have shown show you, uh, say, in the case of uh, uh, ice slurry, <coughs> so the distribution of the solid fraction. So in the case of uh, ice slurry, So you can say, in the, in the case of ice slurry, so the distribution is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, inhomogeneous. So it's due to the difference of the density. It's uh, quite dense here. It's quite uh, uh, less dense here. Yeah. I want to know the, what is the ideal distribution for that. Uh, Ideal heat transfer, uh, uh, it's hard to say. So in, in general, in the case of uh, homogeneous flow, it's uh, uh, in the modeling, we think it's quite I ideal. But uh, it is not true in the case of uh, uh, very high solid fraction. In that case, you have to think about this person uh, approach. Uh, it, it's hard to say which is ideal case. Uh, in the Application in the future, yeah. it is uh, possible for uh, possible of controlling the distribution. Yeah. Well, so only we have to uh, uh, like that. Uh, only think about gravity. Uh, no, in the case of application, you have different kinds of flow direction. For example, horizontal, vertical. Uh, sometimes even you have a distributor. You have a U-turn, something like that. In that case, uh, uh, from uh, our study. So if you consider the pressure drop and heat transfer into consideration together, uh, the solid fraction, maybe 20%, 20 to 30% is 
somehow a bit better, we think. Thank you very much. Yeah. I have a question yeah. regarding this. Okay, so in yeah. case of the ice, ice uh, uh, you know, has a, s a smaller density than liquid, right? Yeah. In that case, uh, maybe you have this distribution. Yes. But how about the PCM, uh, you know, uh, or uh, type A or type B? In yeah. that case, maybe the, uh, you know, the density of the the yeah, density of the... Maybe the distribution is opposite, right? Yes. Uh, I'll just show you some case. Exactly, for the uh, TBMS case, the density uh, of the solid phase is a little bit larger, just, just only a little bit larger than that of solution. So you, you can say, in the case of work, work time, you have some limitation. Yeah, it's going down, it's a limitation. But in the case of uh, a little bit larger uh, flow velocity, so due to the uh, drag force of the liquid, so you, you have a nurse the limitation here. So Maybe it's a water is special, you know. Yeah, water is quite special. For the piece of this case, yeah. Okay. For the piece of this case, so there is also some difference, just a limited difference between solid phase and uh, water. Any questions? I have another question. Mm. So you compare the type A and type B. Yeah. So in general, so if my understanding is correct, um, when we have a heat transfer enhancement, yes. so the, in many cases, pressure drop increases as a penalty. Yeah. But in your uh, case, so type B has a larger heat transfer coefficient and a low pressure drop. Yeah. What is the mechanism? Uh, we don't try to enhance the heat transfer of uh, uh, for example, type B, we just understand uh, this uh, uh, heat transfer coefficient of uh, uh, type B is a little bit larger, is, uh, larger than that of type A. The reason is that uh, uh, the latent heat of type B oh. is larger than that of type A. And also for the pressure drop, the, the, the size, the general size of type B is smaller mm -hmm. than that of type A. How about the difference between, uh, of thermal uh, conductivity between type A and type B? Uh, unfortunately, we did not, uh, we cannot measure type A because the size of uh, type A uh, is larger. Soon it will sedimentary. Okay. So if you measure thermal conductivity, so you want to be, you want to make the fluid homogeneous. So in that case, uh, type B is smaller and it can can be sustained for an hour to be regenerated. So in this case, a, a, a better heat transfer comes from the large uh, latent heat of Yeah, the very reason. Yeah, and the, the smaller pressure drop comes from the difference small, of the shape. Small size, yeah. Small size or shape? Uh, small size, small and also shape. shape. Also shape. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. My mic is coming. Uh, thank you very much for very interesting talk. So the sum of conductivity of this slide is uh, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. You showed uh, Yeah. I just go back to superconductivity. Yeah, here. Yeah. <coughs> 0 0.4. 0 0.4, so, yeah. But uh, in your case, uh, this low sum of conductivity is not the issue for plastic application. Uh, yes, uh, in our uh, in this case, uh, thermal conductivity is not a uh, uh, very important issue. But uh, in the case of uh, you evaluate uh, the heat transfer performance, you need to know uh, thermal conductivity of the thermal phase itself. As well as for um, the most important case is that uh, probably you know, if you, uh, s some people are doing experiment in the case of carbon dioxide hydrogen, uh, as a solid phase. So they want to know some fundamental uh, information of the different kinds of uh, hydrate phases. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions? Uh, what is the important parameter for ceramic? For ceramic? Uh, 
Uh, I think uh, uh, important thing is that uh, semiconductivity and uh, uh, real, log real logic uh, problems, because uh, uh, in the case of uh, pressure drop, you, you have to understand the real logic uh, uh, parameter. For accurate solution, it is simple. It's, it is just uh, Newtonian fluid. But in the case of uh, such two-phase flow, there is a liquid a, a solid phase. So you have to know uh, uh, flow index parameter and also uh, fluid consistence parameter. That, that, that's important to evaluate the pressure drop. Any question? Any question? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for our uh, talk. And uh, when PCM is used in the uh, solar energy storage system, yeah. uh, the, the system needs uh, agitation equipment. Uh, agitation. 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 Agitation, yes. Agitation. So do you include the power, cons power consumption of the agitation ag equipment? Yeah, of course. Uh, in, in, in my uh, system, I assure you, uh, in the final presentation, uh, uh, we have included such agitation into consideration, of course. Uh, it does not have the uh, consider effect on the... Uh, th this agitation does not uh, have a very large uh, effect on the total. Thank you very much. Any, any questions? Okay. So, if you want to ask, Thank you uh, once again for the speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you.